This Pinterest account consistently drives over 70,000 monthly visitors to my blog. But here is what most people don't realize. Pinterest success isn't just about creating pretty pins. The other key to success is having a blog that's technically optimized for how Pinterest actually works. Most bloggers focus on the pin design and completely ignore the technical foundation. Pinterest is fundamentally different from other social platforms. It's actually a visual search engine, which means it evaluates your website. It actually scans your web pages to understand the quality of your content. Pinterest will analyze your content structure and pay attention to your site's technical performance. Just this alone makes Pinterest very different from TikTok, Instagram or Facebook. And first, I wanted to clarify a question that I get asked so many times. Do I have to use WordPress for a blog? Yes, it is the Content Management System or CMS that I recommend. There are others like Wix or Squarespace, for example, and they can make things look easier at first. But then you will face so many limitations when trying to grow your blog. WordPress holds over 60% of the CMS market, so it's by far the most used platform. And because of that, it has an entire ecosystem around it, including WordPress themes, WordPress plugins, and seamless integrations with other services. So for a blog website, just forget about other platforms, unless, of course, you're doing it just as a hobby and you don't want to grow your website into something that will actually make you money. But I assume people watching this video actually want to generate income with it. So all the recommendations today are for people who are taking their blog seriously. And the first thing we'll talk about is WordPress themes. Your theme choice matters more than you think. Pinterest and Google, by the way, too, factor sites that load quickly and display content clearly. It values it to a point that a few years ago, I have seen massive domain blocks on Pinterest. At the time, thousands of times were affected simultaneously by tweaks in Pinterest algorithm that specifically penalized sites that were not loading content fast enough and Pinterest users were leaving them frustrated. So if you ask me which WordPress themes are good for site speed, I recommend themes like Astra, Generate Press or Cadence because they're built for performance. I'll drop links to these in the description below this video. And here is what Pinterest looks for in your theme. It looks for clean, semantic HTML structure, fast loading times, mobile first responsive design. This is a biggie, by the way, because Hey, Pinterest is a mobile app, if you didn't realize it. So the majority of your Pinterest audience will see your site's mobile version and it has to work pretty well. Pinterest will be looking for proper heading hierarchy like H1, H2, H3 and schema markup support. This is a bit technical and I don't think it's worth going into a lot of details on what schema markup, but this is related to your Pinterest SEO because Pinterest pulls text from your page as your title for your pin title. So for this to work, you need proper schema markup. Next, you need to optimize your content layout for Pinterest users. They're in discovery mode. They're looking for ideas and inspiration. So make sure that your structure, the structure of your posts has clear headings that people can scan quickly and read even on mobile devices, that you have bulleted lists that Pinterest can easily read, that you have multiple images throughout your content. This is so that people can save these images from your page. And this works great for creating viral pins from your site. And you have to add related post sections at the bottom of the post. This way users don't leave your site after visiting the first page, which gives Pinterest a good signal about quality of your content and it helps your pins rank better. And now that your WordPress and theme foundation is solid, let's talk about the hosting requirements that Pinterest algorithms actually prefer. Pinterest will evaluate your site's technical performance, and the hosting is the foundation for everything here. First, it's speed requirements. So just like Google, Pinterest doesn't give priority to slow loading sites in their algorithm, which makes sense, right? 
No platform will want to send users to sites where people will just get frustrated. If you start your site on a shared hosting, it won't cut it for serious Pinterest growth. You need hosting that provides built-in caching systems, which helps your site load faster, SSD storage for faster data retrieval, automatic scaling capabilities, and close to 100% uptime guarantee. And there are also some geographic considerations for hosting if you want to get traffic from Pinterest, because Pinterest, it does have a global audience, but if you're targeting US traffic, it needs to have a lot of US-based servers. The hosting that can provide you all of this is Kinsta. They kindly sponsored this section of the video, but I would recommend them anyway, because Kinsta provides premium managed hosting for WordPress. With 37 global data centers, and over 300 CDN locations. In simple words, your blog will run on one of the fastest, most reliable infrastructures on the web. Even if you get a traffic spike from Pinterest, your site stays live because Kinsta's plans are scalable. And you definitely want your site to stay live and load fast because A, you don't want to lose all that potential add income during the spike, and B, you want to make sure that Pinterest algorithm doesn't get bad signals about your site, and obviously when it loads too slow, this would be a bad signal. Kinsta's dashboard is super intuitive, even for non-techies, and you get daily backups, built-in caching, and support from WordPress experts 24-7, not from AI bots. Check the first link in the description and sign up today because Kinsta is currently offering the first month for free on select plans. Plus, they have a 30-day money-back guarantee and unlimited free migrations, so you can test it risk-free. Now I'll tell you what are the specific plugins you need for Pinterest optimization and how to configure them correctly. First, you'll have to look at your SEO plugin setup. I recommend you to use either Rank Math or Yoast, but configure them specifically for Pinterest. Make sure that you enabled open graph tags, that you set up Twitter cards, Pinterest reads them as well. Configure schema markup for articles, optimize meta descriptions as they can be used for Pinterest SEO as well. Next, check out your image optimization for Pinterest. The platform is visual, so you want to have lots of images on the site that are at least 1000 by 1500 pixels. This is the minimum recommended size for Pinterest. But in this case, the file can be large, so image optimization is crucial. What you need to do here is compress images to under 100 kilobytes when possible. You can also use an image optimization plugin like ShortPixel. Try to keep your image aspect ratios vertical. Pinterest prefers two to three vertical. Enable lazy loading for faster page speeds and add descriptive alt texts for accessibility. Then you'll also need a social sharing plugin. You can install a plugin that I use on my blogs. It's called Habab right now. Previously, it was known by other names such as Grow and SocialPug. But configure Pinterest buttons specifically. Add hover buttons on images, usually in the middle. Um, add sticky buttons on the left side for desktop users so that they can see the buttons at any time while they're scrolling down the post. On mobile devices, I usually put the sticky buttons at the bottom of the screen. And then you will definitely need to think about your email marketing strategy. I already said it today, Pinterest users are browsers, they're not immediate buyers. So if you sell something on your site and you don't want only to make money with display ads, then you need to make sure that you capture those visitors. Try to make exit intent pop-ups with Pinterest-friendly lead magnets, or you can add inline forms with content, or opt-in incentives like free checklists or templates. And here is something that most people miss. When you install plugins, don't install all of them at once. Install one plugin and see what happens. Especially check if there is any negative impact on your site speed. Because Pinterest algorithms penalize slow sites, so every plugin must earn its place on your site. There is also some Pinterest-specific technical uh, setup I wanted to mention. We will configure some elements that directly impact your Pinterest performance. 
One, you have to verify your website with Pinterest to unlock Pinterest analytics access, uh, to unlock rich pins, uh, increased trust and signals because your domain is verified, and even better algorithm treatment. You also want to optimize every image for Pinterest discovery. You need to use descriptive file names with keywords. Yes, I mean when you create a file and save it on your computer, uh, you should include keywords in the file name of that image. It never hurts to give this additional signal. Add comprehensive alt text to these images. Include captions when they're relevant. And optimize image titles for Pinterest search. And then keep in mind that your content management approach directly impacts Pinterest performance. Because Pinterest is a highly seasonal platform. They even have a tool called Pinterest Trends. It's trends.pinterest.com, where you can check which keywords and topics get more popular in which months of the year. It is important to follow these trends on Pinterest because the algorithm literally shows more seasonal pins to users, even if they didn't actively look for this seasonal content. But because it's a search engine, it also needs some time to index your pins and evaluate them. So plan your content calendar around Pinterest behavior. For seasonal content, you give 45 to 60 days in advance. Also add some evergreen content for consistent traffic and create content clusters around popular Pinterest searches. And then there's something that you can do once you have an established blog. And what most bloggers forget to do on a regular basis is to keep your WordPress database clean for better performance. Remove spam comments and unused revisions of your blog posts. Optimize your database monthly. Monitor your database size and performance. And once your foundation is built, you need systems to, again, to monitor and scale your Pinterest success. So these are the tools that can help you monitor your blog's performance. One is Google PageSpeed. Uh, this will give you some insights for speed monitoring. And you can also check your site on GT metrics for an even more detailed analysis. You can use Pinterest analytics for traffic insights and Google Search Console for technical issues on your site. The bloggers who succeed on Pinterest in the long term aren't just good at creating pins. They have built blogs that Pinterest wants to promote. So if this video helped you understand better the technical side of what it takes to have a blog that gets a ton of Pinterest traffic, then hit subscribe for more in-depth blogging strategies and grab my free Pinterest setup checklist in the description. It includes every technical step that we covered today. Next, watch my video on Pinterest SEO strategies to start optimizing your content for Pinterest search. I'll see you in that next video.